searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't wanna be one of the nameless. I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it. And I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations. Don't try to stop me. I exist to write my own story. After polling the internet and asking a couple of guys who've actually built these online. It sounds like the consensus is mount the steering gearbox so that it touches that radiator mount and it's as far forward as it can be against that, that radiator. Um, there's still a tiny gap here. Some guys have actually gone so far as to space it out and push it all the way forward against this. However, I'd have to space it out a little over half inch away from the frame. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like weird leveraging and stuff. And I don't know, I'm just not a fan. So I'm gonna go what everybody else has done, which is push it all the way tight to the radiator. And I mean, at full bump, our tie rod, a drag link will get fairly close to the diff cover, but that's fine, that's at full bump. I mean, as long as it's not hitting it, we're good. So I'm gonna do what everybody else has done. I'm um, not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to make it work. So what I did is took one of these um, super thick wall half inch spacer um, and sleeved the frame with it. Now I gotta do that to the other spots. Um, I've done the front one so far. And uh, then We'll keep moving forward. Okay, so we cut and sleeved a hole here. Um, and now uh, for this hole on the bottom of the box, I actually had to flatten my um, spacer, my sleeve on the bottom because it sits right in the bottom of the frame and um, I wanted to leave the original frame and not cut it on the bottom. So I did cut it on the top. The top one we're gonna take and uh, weld uh, the sleeve into place. Um, the bottom, so I've cut this, so it just barely fits in between the frame rails so I can slide it down into there and then I drilled these holes so I can plug weld it into place. And uh, I'm gonna attempt to, to do a little weld around there and then just re-drill it. But that way, that sleeve should be good and solid in place. And then we'll, once it's in place, we can drill square through the other end. So um, then we'll, we'll get the box up here, put the sleeve uh, in with the box. We'll get this one tack welded um, in a couple of spots. And we'll pull the box back off and final weld that. But uh, yeah, just uh, making tracks. What I'm doing is putting a half inch drill bit into that half inch sleeve to try and uh, locate it um, best as possible. And then we'll, uh, then we'll tack it. But that way I have some meat hanging out so I can check it for square and level. Um, so the bolts are going through to somewhat reasonably close to, to perpendicular to the outside mounting surface. So it puts a good even clamping force around the bolt head. And like that, we got it mounted, just like everybody else mounts them. So we uh, are right against the radiator there, um, raised up off the frame a little bit, and just enough to get the bolts to kind of line up to the frame the way I did it. So those have those real thick, heavy duty sleeves for all three bolts. Um, and the outside of the frame has been plated obviously, so should be a good solid mounting connection for them. And uh, yeah, check. One thing done, nine million to go. Okay, so the next phase is I'll put in the transfer case in, the manual shifted one, pull up the um, cup holder thing, which literally just lifts up. It's just snapped into place. And just eyeballing from underneath the back of the transmission um, is really close to the shifter. So I'm guessing when I drill, I'm going to drill a locating hole, but I'm guessing it's going to pop up kind of right in this area somewhere. So I'm going to go underneath, measure back, um, 
to the center of the shifter. Pop that hole up through here um, so we can locate it up here, see what's going to be in the way. And then I'm going to take a, a hole saw and drill a hole, um, hopefully big enough, to uh, be able to get over the shifters. So, yeah, that's what we're working on now. Tonight, hopefully, we'll get this transfer case hanging back off the back of the transmission. All right, so from underneath the truck, I am going to attempt to eyeball what should be uh, one and a half plus three sixteenths, whatever that is, because it was three and three eighths. So I'm going to eyeball a mark up there on the floorboard with a marker, and we're going to drill a hole. So I marked my hole and drilled it with a four and a quarter inch hole saw. It looks like that'll allow me access to all the bolts from the top side to put the shifter in. Um, I'm gonna tape over the hole in the transfer case, try and get the transfer case bolted into place, and then we're gonna come up here and see what we gotta do as far as getting the shifter shifters to come up through and how we wanna bend them or mount them and make sure that we can still roll all the gears with the transmission without it being in the transfer case shift levers in the way. So yeah, interesting, fun stuff. Okay, so the transfer case bolts right in. After swapping over that adapter, um, the coupler piece, but yeah, bolts right up in there. Looks like it belongs. Now we can work on the shifters. So I just climbed up in the truck for the first time since I pulled it in here and started cutting it apart. And it's kind of, obviously it's filthy, but kind of sitting at close to where it's going to sit height-wise, and it feels massive. I'm 6'4", <laughs> so you're like yeah. six and a half feet? Yeah. Tall, probably? Yeah, it's pretty tall. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Um, so anyway, there's the hole. Where our shifter is going to come up through, you can see the duct tape in there that I covered the hole of the transfer case with. So it looks like I'm going to pop the um, console sections apart here and see if I can get this shifter um, fitted and figure out how we're going to bring those levers up through and make it all work. So I removed the screws that hold um, the two sections of console down. I was able to pull the back section and just rock it up out of the way slightly. The front section then I was able to um, pull up, um, kind of twist in between and get it. Uh, the front part of it has just snapped into place. So once you got this back kind of up, it slides back out at you. Then I uh, removed the shift boot, which has a little metal ring that you just were able to, to like squeeze in and pull down from underneath. So I got that out of the way, and then I am working on trying to uh, just figure out the shifter setup here. So this is first gear, obviously, second gear with a knob on it. It would hit uh, this shifter, um, the one closest to you, which is your high-low range. So forward low, neutral, and then back would be high, but you can see I'm hitting the console. So. Um, I need to figure out what best suits me as far as bending those shifters and getting them back um, to a position where I'm happy with the way that they function. And that's going to be different for everybody, right? Because not everybody has the same idea. So part of me thinks maybe the best course of action is to bend this way over to the edge here. Um, you know, this uh the transmission shifter never gets into this territory in this corner um you know but again it's gonna put it that would put it like over into here if i were to bend it over um and this you know we could have to get it over onto this side the driver's side of the transmission shifter so we could do that um the other one uh, the two four-wheel drive selector um, is in the forward position of the two-wheel drive right now. Again, to go back into four, I would have to to notch out the console so or bend this rod forward, um, which I think might be the route that I take. Um, I may just uh, 
bend the two four wheel drive selector um, forward so that it stays within the area of the shift boot for the transmission shifter and then bring the uh, high low range selector over um, you know again I'll have to I'm gonna have to bend it forward some more so that I can get it into high range um, and bring it over so I think that's what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna sit here and ponder it for a minute before I commit to anything in case I come up with a different plan. Got a hole. Okay. Let's start there. Okay. Okay. So. All right. So what we've done is we heated the shifter up and bent it towards me slightly. Um, that should be fine. Just trying to give myself um, a little more room on the passenger side of the shifter. I think we're gonna try and bend these this direction towards the passenger side a little bit and they need to be bent forward slightly. So we need to make sure that um, we can go through all the gears but with clearance and right now we're going to hit so we got to get these things bent over and up a little bit and uh then we'll put the console back on and make sure that everything fits with the console with the shifter and with my knee okay so uh with this bent you can see um from a driver's perspective um but yeah still tons of room uh to run the truck through the gears with the transmission um, however, I ran out of oxygen in my torch set, so I was able to bend the uh, passenger side shifter, which is the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive selector. And you can see two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, we're not hitting um, the console at all. We have adequate clearance. Um, and then even uh, with putting the, well, the transmission over here into reverse, we have clearance to this shifter. However, I wanted to bend this one but I ran out of oxygen. So when I get more oxygen, we'll bend this shifter over here. So we'll have both the uh, transfer case shifters side by side. And again, the transmission in reverse right there, we got tons of room over here to get this other shifter moved over. So um, I think that's gonna be the setup in here. Should work out great. Kind of excited about it. So we'll get that done and then um, I'm going to put the boot back on the transmission shifter through the floor and then um, the front range off-road transfer case shifters came with a boot and we got to come up with a plate uh, so we can get that mounted to the floor, try and keep um, road noise and debris to a minimum. But yeah, so far so good, liking how it's coming out. I have poked away at a little bit of stuff here. Um, so I got the 35 spline curl molly outer um, axle shafts put on with new universal joints. Um, the wheel bearings are back from being uh, machined. So um, I got those. Um, the wheel bearings had to be machined out uh, for the 35 spline shafts. So we've got that all done. Um, now we need to uh, get the wheel studs um, put in the bearings again and uh, then we're going to attempt to uh, we'll get the threads cleaned up on the back side new stud kit here um, new seals so we're going to try and get the uh, front axle kind of put together a little bit more today and I also have the fitting for the ARB front air locker um, which I need to get installed um, this little thing here basically i need to get this installed in the top of the diff housing right there um that hole i gotta tap um tap that so we're gonna you know put a a rag a tacky rag on the inside and then try and run our tap through there and make sure we don't get any metal shavings inside the diff um yeah so we got some things going on on the inside of the truck i have been kind of waiting on trying to 
to secure a deal on uh, a doubler kit, but so far, no luck. Um, so I kind of been holding off on putting the console area back together until I got word on that. Um, maybe I'll get to go ahead and just get that put back together. And then once I do, then I'll probably hear back from um, the people I've been trying to get a hold of about a doubler. Because <laughs> that's the way it works, right? But anyway, just, uh, yeah. It's a crummy Saturday outside. It's snowing and blowing and crappy. So we might as well be in here getting something accomplished. So see what we can get done today. So we've drilled the and tapped the hole for the airline, for the air locker. Just working on that right now, getting that tightened up. And then we can, uh, <coughs> excuse me, we'll clean up the surface and uh, get the diff cover glued on there and bolt it up tight. And we'll put some tape over the top of this for now. So that while we're fitting things into place, we don't get dust and crud down in there. But uh, yeah, back in the garage, trying to make some headway, get the cotter pins in the uh, ball joints, get the greasers installed in those, and then we can get the axle shaft slid into place and maybe get some wheel bearings on here. All right, so the airline is popped through with the fitting on it and stuff like we need to have all prepped and we cleaned and um, resealed and installed the differential cover and we got the outer the axle shafts installed the grease certs put in the ball joints so we're making some headway um now i've got the i went ahead and bought new the inner seal that goes in this outer knuckle just to try and keep water and debris and stuff from getting into the back side of the lockouts um however i don't have anything here to press them in or push them into place um and they're kind of a bugger. So I think I've got the right tool at work. So um, I'll see if I can borrow that and bring it home tomorrow. Um, but yeah, they're kind of a big, kind of a big hog. So we're gonna get that done um, on another time. And for now, I worked on gonna clean up the threads and get the new uh, studs and the uh, hub assemblies. Um, to mount the hub assembly to the knuckle. So we'll get that taken care of and then see hopefully uh, if there's clearance to pull the wheel studs in because I don't have all of my wheel studs yet. So they didn't have enough, had to order some. So see if we can get the bearing installed or not or what, what's gotta happen. Um, yeah, anyway, it's making progress. It doesn't feel like it's fast progress, but something's better than nothing. We'll take whatever we can get. So, what do you guys think? Wheel choice. Hmm. And eventually, I'm hoping to have fiberglass fenders, maybe some retro Toyota graphics. So, wheel color. Do we go gold or black? Um... So I got the hookup on some wheels because they only had three left in gold. And nobody anywhere in the country has another gold one. But they had a black one still. So I got a smoking deal on three gold ones and bought a black one. And now I got to decide. Do I powder coat the last one gold to match? Do I make them all black to match? Do we do something a little more crazy? Yellow, orange, green, purple, pink. What do you guys think? Help me out here. Let's pull the audience. 